In the 17th and 18th centuries, when chemistry was in its infancy, researchers believed that there were fundamental differences between things that were living and inorganic materials. Living things, they felt, had some sort of vital life force. Today, we know that all matter, whether living or non-living, follows the same scientific principles. But there are significant differences in the chemical makeup of organic and inorganic substances. Organic matter, to a chemist, is any material made up of substances that are living or were once living. The element carbon is the basis of all organic substances, and sometimes organic chemistry is defined as the study of carbon compounds. Carbon has been called the element of life. It provides the foundation of the molecular structure of all living things, whether they are plants, animals, or microorganisms. Carbon's ability to combine with other elements results in a vast array of chemical structures. Of the estimated 12 million substances that have been identified, fully 80% of them have carbon as an important part of their molecular structure. Carbon-based substances range from simple sugars to complex proteins and DNA, and even diamonds. They include fibers in the clothes we wear, almost all of the food we eat, oil, gasoline, coal, plastics, wood, graphite, limestone, coral, and marble. All of these products are composed of organisms that were once alive, and all of them have carbon as an important part of their molecular structures. The secret of this unusual element lies in its atomic structure. Carbon has the atomic number of six and is in the second row, or period, of the periodic table. It is an atom with six electrons in two energy levels. The outer shell, or valence level, has only four electrons. Elements in the second period, such as carbon, need eight electrons in order to fill the valence level. Carbon exactly fills half of its valence level with electrons. The octet rule says that atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons in order to acquire a full set of valence electrons. A carbon atom usually satisfies the octet rule by making four covalent bonds with other atoms. These bonds can be four single bonds, a double bond and two single bonds, or a triple bond with one single bond. Carbon is the only element that has the ability to bond in such a variety of combinations. Because carbon has only two energy levels, and consequently its valence electrons are relatively close to the nucleus, carbon is able to form short, strong, stable, covalent bonds. Due to these characteristics, carbon frequently links up with other carbon atoms, as well as other elements like hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen to produce long chains of atoms. Carbon atoms provide the framework for an enormous variety of different compounds that can participate in an amazing range of chemical reactions, and it is these compounds that provide the basis of life. Chemists categorize the many different carbon substances by their molecular structures. The most simple are hydrocarbons, molecules that only contain carbon and hydrogen. Most of the Earth's hydrocarbons exist in deposits of natural gas and petroleum deep in the Earth's surface. We use them for a wide variety of purposes, such as gasoline for running our cars, heating homes, and producing electricity. Both natural gas and petroleum are formed from the remains of marine organisms that were trapped and compressed deep in the earth. That is why hydrocarbons are called fossil fuels. There are thousands of hydrocarbons. This is a molecule of methane, the simplest of the hydrocarbons. 
It is a highly flammable gas that is given off whenever organic material decomposes. That is why methane gas is such a problem around landfill sites. The chemical formula of methane is CH4, but this orbital diagram demonstrates how the molecule is structured. Carbon's four valence electrons rearrange themselves into four identical hybrid orbital shapes, keeping as far apart as possible. When the four hydrogen atoms combine with the carbon atom, the resulting molecule satisfies the octet rule because the outer shell is now full. Methane is part of the alkane family of hydrocarbons, like the one shown here, and a number of others. All alkanes contain only single bonds between the carbon atoms. They are often called saturated hydrocarbons, suggesting that the carbon skeletons are filled to capacity with hydrogen atoms. There can also be branched alkanes, such as this. But the important thing is that the carbons are always linked with a single bond. Diagrams such as this are useful ways of understanding molecular structures. But it is important to remember that these molecules are not flat, like a drawing on a piece of paper. They are three-dimensional and, like all molecules, are in constant motion. The general formula for alkanes is CnH2n plus 2, n being the number of carbon atoms. It is easy to figure out the number of hydrogen atoms in the molecule if the number of carbon atoms is known. Butane, for example, has four carbon atoms, n equals 4. We get the number of hydrogen atoms by multiplying 2 times 4 and adding 2, 10. Carbon's versatility allows it to form chains of atoms, but it also can form rings. When they have only single bonds, they are called cycloalkanes, but they have a different formula because they have two fewer hydrogen atoms. Its general formula is CnH2n. Saturated hydrocarbons are filled to capacity with hydrogen atoms. Unsaturated hydrocarbons are not filled to capacity. They contain a double or triple bond between carbon atoms. Apples contain ethene gas, which helps them ripen. This is the molecular structure of ethene. Note that there is a double bond between the two carbon atoms. Ethene is an example of an alkene. All alkenes have a double bond between one pair of carbon atoms and all of them have a name with a suffix of ene. The general formula for alkenes is CnH2n. There are also hydrocarbons with one triple bond. These are members of the alkyne family, and all of them have a name with a suffix of ine. The general formula for alkynes is CnH2n minus 2. The naming of hydrocarbons has been designed to specify the chemical structures of the substances. These are the prefixes of the names, which tells us the number of carbon atoms in the molecule. The suffix indicates the type of bond. Methane is a good example. Meth means the molecule has one carbon atom, and ane stipulates it has only single bonds. Here are some other examples. The root of the name of the compound specifies how many carbon atoms there are, and the suffix indicates the type of bonds between two of the carbon atoms. Overwhelmed with all of these names? Don't despair. The thing to understand is the pattern of the relationships. As you work with them, the names will become familiar. Hydrocarbons are compounds containing only carbon and hydrogen, but a number of organic compounds contain carbon, hydrogen, and other elements. These are called hydrocarbon derivatives. There are a staggering variety of these compounds, but fortunately, they can be grouped into classes 
based on their molecular structures. These classes are called functional groups. In halocarbons, one or more of the hydrogen atoms have been replaced by atoms from the halogen family, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. CHCl3 is structured like the methane molecule, but three of the hydrogen atoms have been replaced by three chlorine atoms. This is called trichloromethane. Its name follows the pattern seen before. Trichloro, three chlorine atoms. Meth, one carbon atom. And ane, single bonds. This compound was known as chloroform, a chemical widely used as a solvent and once used as an anesthetic. There are many halocarbons. Most have chains of carbon atoms bonded to hydrogen and other atoms from the halogen group. Just as halogen atoms can substitute hydrogen atoms, so can atoms from the hydroxyl group, which contains OH. These are alcohols. There are many different alcohols, and their chemical names all end in the suffix all. This is methanol, the simplest of the alcohol group. Again, the chemical name follows the pattern. Meth, only one carbon atom. An, signifies a single bond. And all, an alcohol. Methanol's other name is wood alcohol. It is a dangerous substance that can be lethal or cause blindness to those that drink it. There are many different types of alcohols. Beer and wine contain ethanol, the same type of alcohol that can be blended with gasoline to produce a clean burning fuel for cars. Ethers are another group. They are molecules which contain oxygen bonded to two carbon atoms. Ethers have various applications. They were once used as an anesthetic and now are used to improve the performance of engines. When an oxygen atom is attached to a carbon atom by a double covalent bond, it is a carbonyl group. Aldehydes and ketones are in the carbonyl group and are used in the manufacture of plastics and adhesives. Two oxygen atoms can also bond to the same carbon atom, which creates groups called carboxylic acids and esters. And there are several classes of organic compounds produced when carbon combines with nitrogen. These classes are called amines and amides. Carbon can enter into a large number of other molecular arrangements to form a variety of common organic compounds. Organic polymers are macromolecules with a backbone of carbon atoms. They are closely linked to hydrocarbons, but they can combine with other elements, such as oxygen, fluorine, nitrogen, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur. They are made up of subunits called monomers, which link together in long chains to make larger molecules often containing thousands or even millions of atoms. Long chains of polymers provide structural strength to plants in such things as tree trunks and stems of flowers. But scientists have also used their knowledge of chemistry to create synthetic polymers we call plastic. The first synthetic polymer was Bakelite, which was marketed in 1911. Rayon soon followed, and nylon was developed in the 1930s. But it was during the Second World War that a wide range of plastics was first produced. Today, plastics made from petroleum, an organic compound, with other elements added to give the desired physical properties, are used in an enormous number of products, from children's toys, to home furnishings, and parts of automobiles. They are inexpensive, easy to mold and shape, do not corrode, can be colored, resist pests such as termites, and can be made to be structurally very strong. 
plastics are truly a miracle product of our age, but their widespread use has created new problems. Plastic does not biodegrade easily. The strength of the molecular bonds means that plastics decompose very slowly. Every year, millions of tons of plastic waste are being dumped into landfill sites, causing massive environmental problems. The life processes in all living organisms involve thousands of chemical reactions that happen continuously. Respiration, digestion, reproduction, the circulation of blood, metabolism, all of these processes and more are chemical processes. These areas are the subject of study of biology and biochemistry. But scientists working in these areas must understand chemistry in order to understand these life processes. Perhaps the most fundamental of all life processes is photosynthesis, a complex chemical process that occurs in plants and some microorganisms, in which light energy from the sun is converted into chemical energy that can be used by the plant and animals further along the food chain. In the cells of plant leaves are tiny organelles called chloroplasts, which give the green color to leaves. In the chloroplasts, carbon dioxide from the air is combined with water and sunlight to produce glucose, a type of sugar. It is then converted into other chemicals, which can be used as energy by cells in living organisms. A byproduct of the photosynthesis process is oxygen, O2, which is released into the atmosphere. Virtually all of the oxygen in the atmosphere, which is essential for the life of all animals, was produced through this process. But animals are also indebted to the cells of plants and algae in another way. When animals eat plants, they gain the glucose, starch, carbohydrates, and other foods that are essential for them to survive. Even carnivores that never eat plants get these nutrients by eating animals that have eaten them. It is in the chemistry of living things that life itself is sustained and maintained. Not only could living things not exist without these chemical processes, but life itself would also not be possible without the simple element of carbon. All matter follows the same principles but there are significant differences in the chemical makeup of organic and inorganic substances, true or false. The element carbon provides the foundation of the molecular structure of every living thing, whether they are plants, animals, or microorganisms, true or false. Carbon has the atomic number of seven and is in the third period of the periodic table, true or false. Because of its characteristics, carbon frequently links up with other carbon atoms and other elements, true or false. Hydrocarbons are molecules of carbon, hydrogen, and other elements, true or false. Methane is the only alkane, true or false. A number of organic compounds contain carbon, hydrogen, and other elements. They are called hydrocarbon derivatives, true or false. Plastics are made from inorganic material and never contain the element carbon, true or false. The life processes in all living organisms involve thousands of chemical reactions that happen continuously, true or false. Animals perform photosynthesis in their cells, true or false.